This micro lecture is on biomass parts to products. I have an image of an explosion here because explosives are an unusual area of biomass chemistry that not everyone thinks about. Many of the first commercial explosives were based on wood, cellulose, and glycerin that had been reacted with nitric acid. This produced things like nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin that became major industrial chemicals for road building, medicine, and mining. Energetic chemicals can be very dangerous, but they also represent a very unique and powerful use of biomass chemistry that cannot be easily mimicked by fossil fuel chemistries. From the bioenergy perspective, they have the potential to convert fairly small amounts of biomass into fairly large sources of energy. For example, 14 grams of an explosive called RDX can be used to generate 100 kilovolt electric pulses. With just a small amount of current, this is approximately 130 horsepower. Comparatively, 16 grams of nitrocellulose can propel a 50 caliber bullet with the same energy as a 4,500 pound F-150 truck moving at 10 miles per hour. Just 16 grams of nitrocellulose has as much energy as that truck moving at 10 miles per hour. Lots and lots of energy contained in a very small package with energetic materials. Imagine if we could generate electricity or power from the controlled use of energetic materials produced from biomass. This is an area with a great deal of potential. Please take a moment to review this week's learning objectives. This week we are covering chemical conversions, our third biomass conversion pathway type. In biomass to parts, we covered turning biomass into cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose. In biomass parts to products, we will be covering turning cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose into sugars and various chemicals. It turns out that many of the chemical processes you can use to break biomass into its pieces can also be used to break those pieces into sugars and chemicals. We will review acid, enzyme, catalyst, and oxidation methods that can break down cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose. I'm going to repeat this analogy because it is important and particularly relevant to what we will learn about here. We are all using biomass chemical conversions right now, and we have recently done a biomass mechanical conversion. Every time you cut your food and eat it, and every time you chew it before swallowing, you are doing a mechanical conversion. You reduced the size of the food biomass to get it into the reactor, your mouth. Then you chewed it so that it could be broken down easier in your stomach. So technically, you had to perform two mechanical conversions. Likewise, two chemical conversions also occurred. As soon as you began chewing the biomass, you began adding enzymes from your saliva to the biomass to begin the breakdown process. Then after you swallowed the biomass, it was conveyed down your throat and into a special reactor where it began the second chemical conversion by being broken down in a 98 degree Fahrenheit hydrochloric acid bath, also known as your stomach. The biomass is broken down enough by these mechanical and chemical conversions that it can be used as a source of nutrition, particularly sugars, for living organisms like us. Thank goodness it's designed so well. Just like the digestion analogy, cellulosic ethanol is like a refined, robotic, industrial cow stomach. This is an oversimplification, but it's fairly accurate and it provides an example just about everyone can get and appreciate. This looks like a repeat because it is. One of the reasons acid hydrolysis with hydrochloric and sulfuric acid is compelling is that the same chemical can be used to both break the biomass into its parts and also to break the cellulose fiber into sugars. The conditions of both reactions are different and it is necessary to separate the solid fibers, but the fact that both processes can use the same reactive chemical is ideal because it means less overall steps which often improves economics. You take the cellulose fibers that were produced from one acid bath and you soak them in a second acid bath until they turn into sugar. Then you recycle all of the acid and the process continues to produce sugar and lignin from biomass. A recent development in the bioenergy industry has been hydrolysis without acid. Instead of acid, it is possible to use subcritical or supercritical water to break cellulose fibers down into sugars. This process has the added benefit of being able to break hemicellulose down into sugars as well. Subcritical and supercritical water reactors require extremely high pressures, so this can be a complicated and expensive process, but it is also very clean and sustainable, which is extremely compelling compared to using acids. If this process proves to be economic at commercial scales, it will certainly play a large role in many bioenergy developments. 
Enzymes are like nanobots. If we ever get to the point of designing little nanobots that perform work as a result of some kind of external stimulus or condition, I bet they will look like enzymes. Like we discussed, enzymes are a very expensive chemical because they have to be harvested from microbes or plants or animals and then purified. Despite this expense, they are absolutely worth the money in most cases. They are extremely efficient and exact catalysts capable of supporting chemical reactions that would be nearly impossible in so few steps without them. They work at room temperature and very moderate conditions, and they can break cellulose and lignin down very effectively. In some ways, enzymes represent the ultimate chemical reactant because of their abilities. However, maybe like a nanobot, they can break easily if the conditions become too extreme or something damages them. The challenge with enzymes is their price and how easily they can be damaged, but if you can get past these challenges, they are hard to beat. Metallic catalysts are what oil refineries use. They are often made of metals like aluminum, nickel, cobalt, ruthenium, and palladium. Just about every transition metal on the periodic table has been found to show catalytic activity on some aspect of biomass chemistry. Metallic catalysts are usually used in the form of beads or powders, and they are mixed with a chemical that needs to be altered. Under various conditions, different metallic catalysts can cause a variety of reactions that can turn cellulose into sugars or acids or even aromatics like gasoline. The strength of metallic catalysts is that they are tougher and cheaper than enzymes. The weakness is that they are not as precise or efficient. There are always trade-offs, like the image shows. Of the chemical conversion methods discussed so far, metallic catalysts show some of the greatest promise to make gasoline from biomass. They are capable of selectively supporting the desired reactions to turn cellulose and lignin components into gasoline. To the extent that these reactions can be done with very little external hydrogen, they could become a commercial reality in the near future. Alternatively, many of the same processes can be used to generate valuable chemicals instead of gasoline, which may make more sense in the long run. There has been a considerable amount of research since the 1980s on using reactive oxygen in the form of singlet oxygen, ozone, and hydroxyl radicals to break down lignin and cellulose into sugars and chemicals. This is a very exciting area of development because it has the promise of being affordable and working at reasonable reactor conditions. The hydrogen link development I previously shared is a recent example of this. They are able to use catalysts like sodium borohydride, lithium alumina hydride, and sodium alumina hydride, and reactants like hydrogen peroxide to generate hydroxyl radicals that quickly and cleanly break down cellulose and lignin. A similar development that is specifically targeting lignin is hoping to produce dicarboxylic acids through highly selective chalcopyrite catalyzed oxidations. This reaction also takes advantage of the reactivity of hydrogen peroxide and its ability to generate hydroxyl radicals. There are related developments that have occurred using ozone and singlet oxygen as well. This is a very high growth, high potential area of chemical conversions. We have covered a lot of material in biomass to parts and biomass parts to products. So in closing, I want to review three major aspects of these chemical conversions. First, large biomass molecules are chemically degraded into smaller molecules. Second, your choice of chemicals, be it acids, enzymes, catalysts, oxidants, etc., largely determines the products and the conditions that you'll have to run at. And third, it is very challenging to recover chemicals and separate out products. The most expensive thing about chemical conversions is the number of steps and figuring out how to recycle and reuse your reactant. If you throw away the reactant that you use, chemical conversions are too expensive, so recycling is a must. When you have a chance, please visit some of the attached links on microbial fuel cells. Microbial fuel cells can generate electricity from any place with wastewater and or aquatic sediments. They can technically be powered by any source of biomass or waste that can be fermented or composted, and unlike alcohol production, the fermentation doesn't have to be nearly as controlled or fast. This is a very neat technology with a lot of promise.